Welcome back, everybody. As those little ghouls and goblins prepare to trick or treat tonight, make sure their spooky shenanigans, of course, are safe as well as sweet. So here to discuss Halloween safety is Baylor Scott and White McLean Children's Medical Center Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Dominic Lucia. And Dr. Lucia, what are some common injuries that you see in the ER during Halloween? Yeah, it's such a fun time, but we do unfortunately see ER visits during this evening. And one of the main ones is really related to falls. So ill-fitting costumes, mask, obstruct visibility, capes, that sort of thing, kids step and fall, curbs. There's also a more significant risk with kids jumping in and out of vehicles, particularly while they're moving. We've seen kids that have been run over before and certainly even hit in the street because they're wearing dark colored clothing and not seen. And then finally, you'll get some non-injury related, more on the medical side of tummy aches from the candy and certainly button battery ingestions are at a worry this time of year as well and the little toys and trinkets that they get. Yeah, you've warned us about those before. Okay, so doctor, what is your general overall mm -hmm. advice then for staying safe tonight? Maybe you're a parent with some, a kid that's finally old enough to go maybe on their own or maybe uh, old enough to walk up to the door themselves. So great always to have a plan, right? No matter whether they're gonna be with you or they're gonna be with someone else. Neither they're who they're gonna be with, where they're gonna be, and they stay in that area, how long they're gonna be out. Make sure they're also visible. So if they're dark colored clothing, they need a glow stick, they need a flashlight, they need something where they're visible. And then finally, make sure they understand this idea of stay on the sidewalks, don't walk on the streets. And if they do have to cross the street, be very cautious about it, looking both ways as we've always taught them. Yep. And then of course, those candy buckets are gonna be plenty full. So what about candy consumption? What should parents do before letting their kids dig in? Yeah, always a tough night of negotiation, but if you can sort of pre-negotiate as a parent, it's going to make things a lot easier later on. So talk about, you're going to probably have a big bag of candy when you get home, and we're going to eat this many pieces tonight, and then maybe we'll save it for the next couple days and parse it out, and then maybe throw the rest away. That's what we do in my house, and it's worked pretty well. But having that expectation setting beforehand can really help the negotiations go better afterwards when you get back to the house. And then finally, make sure that candy is age appropriate for the child. So the younger ones, they don't need these little jawbreakers and hard candies that can be choking hazards. And certainly if your kid has food allergies, go through the candy and make sure there's nothing in there that could harm them. Again, great advice. We used to do the two for me, one for you, uh -huh. you know, in my house. But uh, <laughs> That's the parent tax. I know it. But uh, you know, uh, Dr. Lucia, it's like winning the lottery for these kids. They love getting a huge candy bar, but mm -hmm. that's not the one you need to get to on opening night, right? Just take yeah. a little one, be conservative tonight.